with improved graphics, lighting, textures, gameplay, and also animations and everything in between and functionality, SPV3 is set up to be one of the best experiences to play Halo on PC. And in this video, I'm going to give you my review on why I believe SPV3 is a must play game on PC if you're a Halo fan. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again give you a new video. Today we're doing a review of the newest version of SPV3. If you guys do not know what that game is, it is a modded version of Combat Evolved on the PC only. And it's basically a culmination of everything that is Halo thrown into this game. But not only does this game have a nice coat of paint over the whole thing, but it has new weapons that have never been in the CE before brand new creative weapons that we've never seen, new missions, new sections of the classic missions that we've also seen before, missions with the Arbiter, and a whole other new fan mod campaign that's definitely worth playing. So if you guys like these review kind of videos, please make sure to tap that like button. Let me know if you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below where your thoughts are on the video as well. And if you had a chance to play SPV3, let me know. I'll read, I'll read all the comments and try to apply to most of them as well. And if you're new to the channel, want to stay up to date with anything Halo related, make sure to tap subscribe and with the bell as well because we all know sub feeds can be kind of weird at times so let's get right into the video here so i recently contacted the developers of spv3 as they were, they were looking for people to kind of play the beta build of their game kind of test out some things before release i contacted them they gave me a build and i got a chance to play it you know, a decent amount played a little bit on the stream as well i will say overall it's a fantastic experience but there are some issues with it as well that will go into this full review of this game so without further ado let's jump right into the details so why should you play spv3 over just classic halo combat evolved one thing like i said the new coat of paint the graphics look fantastic on this new version of spv3 it's been greatly improved from the original version that you guys might have seen probably about a year ago when the official release came around where i, I did find some visuals of spv3 to be kind of uh, jarring or not really that pleasing to the eye but with the recent update a lot of things have improved the grass textures especially the green colors have been a little bit less saturated and just looks much more part of the entire art design that comes behind halo combat evolved now, I will say at some points when it comes to the lighting, it gets a bit dark on uh, one of the missions actually when you get to play as the Arbiter, which is pretty freaking cool. It gets really dark and there's also a brand new mission that's completely created as well for Combat Evolved. It's a bit of flood themed kind of thing with that as well. It was so dark it was actually kind of hard to keep an eye on characters. So sometimes it gets, it gets a bit dark, but it kind of helps add to that cinematic feature that kind of comes with uh, playing the campaigns of Combat Evolved. This game also comes with a bunch of new settings. You can bump it up to actually the 4K resolution, uh, up to 120 frames, I believe, as well, depending on your monitor, with a slew of different other kind of options like motion blur, lens flare, lens dirt kind of thing, depth of field, and much more cinematic kind of options with this game that kind of help give you a much more uh, interactive, much more immersive experience that you can get on the regular Combat Evolved, because the Combat Evolved that you can just pick up regularly is actually not really that great because it was kind of a rushed port uh, from Gearbox that really didn't do it justice as if you can see on the MCC is actually the version that you play is the PC uh, port from Gearbox and uh, there's been a few issues when it comes to the visuals on that game especially where Combat Evolved for SPV3 looks fantastic. Now obviously there's just a small group of guys here who are just really passionate fans who want to create recreate the magic that is Combat Evolved. So obviously you're not going to have that level of polish you can get from a AAA developer team like 343. But I will say that this, for what they had to start with, it does look really well done. Now when it comes to the gameplay, I'm sure what your guys are all worried about, the nuts and bolts. How does this game play? Well, it definitely plays very akin to Combat Evolved, but with a lot of updated features that we've kind of grown accustomed to when it comes to playing Halo. They even added in armor abilities in a very similar style as in Halo Reach. None of them really affect gameplay to the point where it kind of changes your play style. It more just kind of enhances things rather than completely changing how you play, which I think is a great way to do this. A lot of the uh, armor abilities they added in are much more passive abilities. Uh, things like the visor from ODST has been added in there. There's a health regen kind of boost to kind of help your shields recharge faster. Uh, there's also a heat vision, which is I found awesome when it comes to playing against camoed elites, which in, in the, one of the new campaigns that was added, which we'll get into later, it really, really helped out when it comes to that stuff. And there's a lot more 
as well as even Sprint added into the game, which they actually did improve the animation of Sprint from the original SPV3 to this version. It's a much more smoother animation, and it's much more deliberate as well as it's not so instant as it is, like say, like in Halo 5 or Halo 4. There's a bit of a build-up time, and it kind of really takes you out of the combat. So a lot of times I didn't really even find myself using it too much, especially since these uh, maps that we've been able to play on are much more scaled to combat evolved style gameplay rather than say how it is in Halo 5 or Halo 4, which things are much more elongated. So I didn't really find Sprint too useful, but it's there if you want to. Now how about those guns? the things that make things go boom, splat, and die and explode in awesome ways. Well, the guns in SP3 pretty much add in almost every kind of gun that's been ever in Halo throughout the entire series some new ones that they that the spv team actually created and some more experimental stuff that was left on the cutting room floor when it comes to combat evolved as well now i'm sure a lot of purists out there might not be happy about this but they did change the magnet but i do think they changed it for the better as it leaves more room for other weapons in the sandbox to be utilized pretty much what they did is they upped the fire rate lowered the damage and it's uh you know pretty much fits right where it should be like a decent starting weapon but there's are better things to pick up but you have weapons like the battle rifle you have a different version of the carbine which i thought was really cool where it doesn't need to reload it just overheats which i think fits more into the, the style of weaponry that you come across the covenant uh, i think even a dmr is in there as well uh, you have this really cool uh brute plasma rifles and things like that uh you have the brute shot that's been added into the game as well so so just uh, the sandbox of all the weapons you can play in Halo Combat Evolved are fantastic. I mean, like, even if you kill a hunter, you can pick up that hunter claw and shoot it. That's so cool. You can even pick up jackal shields and defend yourself. Now, I didn't really find myself using that too much because you can't attack with when you're wearing, using it. But it's a great just new addition to kind of help add some more fun to the game, which I really enjoyed. Now, the audio that's in this game is fantastic they did grab a lot of audio files from other halo games as well as in there is a mission you can play as the arbiter actually there's a few missions you can play as the arbiter and they actually did borrow some like i believe some halo 2 audio clip and edited it into combat evolve for one of their own custom made campaigns that they created for this game we're here to secure the cartographer ready your troops we're heading inside we shall not elite i've already lost too many brothers i will not let any more of my pack slaughtered by your kind's foolish decisions. The big thing though is the music. The music is so well done in this game. It's actually recreated and also did their own uh, take on it as well. So it's original score which sounds so good like it just calls back to those original classic songs but gives it a new flair to it and it just gives you the old and new kind of remastered kind of feeling when you listen to these songs and they're so well done you have to hear it for yourself Now, when it comes to the missions, things pre stayed pretty much the same. Obviously, they got a new coat of paint on those, but they actually added in whole new sections to these missions that kind of give you some new gameplay options that you may have not ha had a chance to experience in Combat Evolved, like some zero-G options, or just some new kind of game mechanic that's been really great in the later versions of Halo, and they added it to this one as well, so they completely created new uh, areas within existing maps, which is pretty freaking cool when you think about it and just kind of gives you just more halo to play which there's nothing wrong about more halo for sure and also with some of the missions like i mentioned earlier you have 100 percent completely original campaign missions added into this as well for the two different kind of campaigns that are in here they have the installation 04 which is your classic halo ce campaign with some new missions added in like playing as the arbiter and things like that as well but then they also add in another mod 
that modded campaign that was originally made back in 2014, at least that's the earliest video I could find of it, of Project Lumoria. Now, without spoiling too much about it, but basically you are uh, Spartan May, a Spartan 2, who jumps onto this foreign planet with along with your ODST buddy, who does have a revive system, which is pretty cool. Uh, I did notice that a lot of times with these missions throughout the game, they would add in uh, AI characters to play with you where you're more solo, because uh, the AI, which we'll get into, it's a bit tough. And the Project Lumoria, which is a completely fan-created campaign, fully voice acted, and it just it captures the scale of Combat Evolved so well. It's a must-play, guys. If you enjoy Halo Combat Evolved and anything in between, just like if you're a fan, a fan of fan fiction or just extra stories and just want something new to play on PC for Halo, play Project Lumoria. It is a great great experience i'm not going to try to get too much into it because i don't want to spoil anything for you guys because i went to it blind and i was like wow i was blown away throughout the entire experience now i will say that the voice acting in project lemoria was a bit okay it wasn't terrible but this it, you can tell there's some lines that landed kind of flat brandon do you read me what's your position currently approximately 300 meters from your location didn't land in the nicest neighborhood Require immediate backup near the foot of the river. Acknowledged. Hold your position. I'm en route. Now, also with this, that some of the uh, animations they had to do, uh, you can tell that they had a bigger idea of what they wanted to accomplish and what they actually could pull off with making it a mod. And so there are some points, points I feel like you have to kind of suspend your disbelief to kind of... Uh, make it so that you can kind of enjoy it a little bit more just kind of like enjoy it for like what it is and just kind of like understand what they're trying to do with it if you can kind of get past that kind of stuff it's super fun guys like again you gotta jump in and play it now one thing that's always been so great about halo combat evolved is the ai and the enemies you play against now what is in this one well basically everything in the regular installation 4 campaign they actually added in brutes and various other kinds of enemy types that were throughout added in throughout halo's franchise and actually added in some new ones as well uh, there was like these little crabby yeah you know, if you remember like the head crabs from half-life they basically added those in for the flood that kind of jump at you and try to attack you and uh, also our flood carrier forms as well just kind of adds some new craziness right there but the ai has been bumped up significantly i played this on normal and it wasn't like the normal that i know when it comes to playing halo this stuff was hard it's like playing on heroic basically even legendary i feel like at some points as well i mean trying to shoot down an elite these guys are ducking and diving so much it's actually really hard to hit them it's kind of re a bit much really and they add more characters on screen as well uh, as they can obviously pull it out with better technology that's been around nowadays and it's uh the campaigns play a lot harder on this one and they have normal they have heroic they have legendary and they have noble and like i said normal difficulty is hard enough for me to get through uh but to do any other higher difficulties you would need to be a well-versed player of these campaign missions uh, to fully be able to get through these missions without just wanting to pull your hair out. But I would probably go on record and saying this is probably the most difficult Halo campaign you, that you can make it that difficult uh, to play. As in, uh, like, because I was playing on normal guys and I was like having to be very conscious of my movements. I wasn't dying a whole lot, but just had to make sure that I was playing very well and my full focus was on the game. Now, when it comes to the feel of SPV3, I mean, it feels like you're playing Halo. It's pretty great. Uh, like, I get some. When you're shooting these weapons, you get some solid feedback that you feel like you are shooting these weapons. Like, I'm fully immersed when I'm shooting these guns, like the battle rifle, which I think it looks pretty freaking awesome. And it's also pretty cool that like it shoots like the uh, Halo 2. Uh, demo e3 demo version which it's burst fire hip fired and then when you scope in it's single fire but you can also toggle the uh, uh, firing mode for that as well which is pretty cool really my only complaint when it comes to how the game feels is really the feel of the game uh, it's, it's hard to say but basically the sensitivity i found to be really high on this game because i had to bump everything down to one on sensitivity and it was still higher higher than i would like uh, I mean, I play multiple games on PC, like I played like Apex Legends, I played uh, Battlefield, a ton of Battlefield on PC, uh, some Call of Duty, I mean, like, 
uh, just pretty much general PC games I can pick up in like Star Wars Battlefront, and I've never really had that issue of the sensitivity being so high that I couldn't, you know, go any lower. And with SPV3, I felt like if the sensitivity could be reduced a bit more, then I think that would be really nice to kind of help keep the aim on. Because, like as I mentioned earlier, with how the AI constantly dodges your shots, it makes it kind of tricky to try to track them as they're dodging around, especially these elites. And when you're on the lowest sensitivity and you still feel like it's too high, your aim feels kind of, well, a bit off. So once you play for about like an hour or something like that, you kind of get used to it and you, you know, start doing just fine. So overall, would I recommend you to play SPV3? Is it worth downloading going through that process? You know, because it's a bit of a process to download it. And I would say absolutely yes. It's so much fun to play it's also a great way to kind of get your hands onto the mouse and keyboard to get ready for when the mcc comes to pc as well and i don't think that's really going to be a competition between which one you're going to want to play uh, because SPV3 offers such a different experience than just playing Combat Evolved that it really does feel like its own game and so i'm not going to give it like 1 to 10 rating i'm just going to say play it. If you have a decent PC, you can play it. Or not even that decent of a PC. I currently run a i5 2500K running at 4.4 gigahertz overclocked on that. And I also have a GTX 1080Ti and a game was generally taking about 25% of my CPU. So you don't need that demanding of a, C a computer to be able to play it. And, um, you know, it's if you have the opportunity, guys, definitely want to jump on a link in the description down below for you to get a chance to download this game right now. And what it does, it takes you to the Reddit page, which helps you go through the whole process of how to download the game. It's a bit of a process, but trust me, it's 100 percent worth it. That's my review of SPV3, the new edition, guys. It's such so much more was added and also the current or existing content was already improved so much. Uh, like it's a whole new experience i'm definitely gonna be streaming this a bunch more if you guys enjoyed this review video please make sure to tap that like button let me know you want to see some more content like this leave a comment down below what your thoughts are on spv3 and if you're gonna get a chance to play it let me know i do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well if you're new to the channel make sure to tap subscribe with the bell and if you miss any content from me check out the videos on the screen right now i'll catch you all in the next video peace out